So we move on to looking at Curly's wife in section two. And first of all, in the description of her, she's called a girl. So we know that she's young. And obviously this kind of gives us an idea that she's going to do silly things and that she is obviously going to be wanting attention, etc., etc. Obviously to do with the stereotype of a, of a girl, uh, you know, obviously is supposed to be actually enjoying her life and you know, maybe seeing the world and doing things. And obviously she's stuck here in a ranch. So it kind of sets up straight away that she's not a woman. She hasn't got kind of a wise head on her shoulders. And that's... Uh, denoted straight away just by the word girl uh, she's got rouged lips so she's obviously she's dressed up for some reason and obviously we can't figure a reason other than she wants to flirt and get the attention of men and obviously then we start to get all the uh, the red references so first of all we still find out that her fingernails are are um, painted in red um maybe also that's kind of a reference you can take it this way if you want that ultimately she'll have blood on her hands obviously because in a way she's responsible for the death of lenny um or at least uh, <coughs> And Candy seems to indicate that at the end with you know, this uh, huge go at her. But um, anyway, the red here is obviously it directly to do with alluring. But you remember, if you, you kind of take things and just think about them, always quantify um, things that are a bit quote unquote out there with them, um, perhaps, or it could be, you know, never say that it's definitely there. What it definitely is, is the fact that she's um, obviously dressing up to get people's attention. And obviously the rest is red is a uh, danger and alluring and those kind of things. Um, she wears a cotton house dress and we know that's going to be problematic because cotton is obviously soft and she's got red mule in steps and they've got red ostrich feathers on them. So we've got this red, 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 it's like signposts of danger, danger, danger and attraction, 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 obviously attraction to, um, uh, Lenny. Lenny um, and then she says um, when she's looking for a husband which she says well I better go look someplace else and she says it playfully so again it's almost like flirtatiously girly in a way that um in a way that, you know, she's trying to get people's attention. Um, she's called a tramp. Uh, and again, it's one of many insults of fortune that's actually thrown at her. And that's interesting because it just shows she's trying to give off one kind of vibe of being, you know, semi-alluring, etc. And then the guys are a little more kind of wise to her ways, as it were. Maybe because most of them are men and because she's a girl or maybe obviously just because she hasn't seen much of the world outside the ranch, whereas they have seen it on many ranches. Who knows? Um, obviously, the biggest thing about Curly's wife is when he looks at her and he says, gosh, she was pretty. And he says that a couple of times. So, again, we've got this idea of... <sighs> Lenny actually being really attracted to her and obviously that sets us up later on for knowing that um, you know, especially when she's dressed like this as well that it's he's going to be, it's going to he, she's going to be something that he tries to pet which is his way of kind of showing his affection to anything he thinks is pretty or soft um, George warns him she's a rat trap ever I seen one uh, I never seen no piece of jailbait worse than her you leave her be so it's important there that you know he george is actually given the command about how to deal with curly's wife but obviously lenny can't actually take it all in and obviously it's really interesting that george is signposting her while she's been signposted here for us um she's been signposted as well completely that uh, you know she's just trouble um and uh it, he wants her to, he wants lenny to completely stay away from her and vice versa so we move on them to the last of the main characters in here and the slim slim is one of the unique characters in the book and the fact that he's near perfect so the first thing we actually find about him obviously he's kind of authority he's got the same hat as the boss and obviously the boss who was dressing so <clears throat> I'm dressing to impress as we've seen one of the other kind of ideas earlier here he has the same hat but obviously here it's actually a lot more or got a lot more authority to it he's very clear the descriptions he has with slim and exactly how he moves so he moves with a majesty achieved only by royalty and master craftsman so you know just showing how highly skilled and how highly uh, unique he is amongst these people uh, he looked kindly again so it's kind of like a very soft and very kind of easygoing uh, with people and obviously that's why you know people confide in him and why people listen to him um and even like his you know soon after meeting george when george is given one compliment about lenny he um slim looks approvingly so it's almost as if you know we find out that this is slim is kind of like uh you know the um the alpha male of the group in the non in in a kind of like a excuse me like in in the sense of being 
No, actually, I take back Alpha Male. He's not exactly aggressive with it. Um, he's the number one guy, basically, that everyone kind of looks up to. We're told that he's the lawgiver, and we're told that all kind of things that actually denote his authority. And the fact that, you know, he can do this straight away, you know, looks approvingly at George for having given the compliment. It shows that he's ready to make connections, and he's actually ready to kind of be closer to 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 people. And actually, that's an interesting thing, because we see his relationship with George develop in some way. And um, obviously, after the tragic death of Len, it kind of gives some hope for George if you do want to take some hope from the book again and this is like the first of the kind of budding friendship and also we see in the way that other characters treat him in their actions um, Slim lets uh, sorry Carlson lets Slim go in front of him which is really important because it shows that uh, Carlson obviously <sighs> understands his authority and actually believes in his authority and therefore lets him go first uh, or it could just be like a simple mark of respect for someone that you do respect and that's really interesting because everyone here on the ranch actually has this kind of feeling and action towards um slim